coming to the subject of the day the myelodysplastic syndrome as you know that this is a heterogeneous group of myeloid malignancy basically characterized by cytopenia most of the patient will have anemia leukopenia thrombocytopenia in various combinations there are dysplasias in the morphology both in peripheral blood and marrow this ineffective erythropoiesis meaning the marrow is invariably cellular or even hypercellular and almost half of the patient have the propensity to go on to develop acute myeloblastic leukemia it's a disease of aged people and job of you and me is to keep this aged population happy and kicking even though we are talking about a relatively non curable disease if we talk about the dysplastic features i've just showing you two of them majority of these pictures show you the nuclear bridging of red cells at the bottom you see a pseudo pelgor wet anomaly over there myelodysplastic syndromes could be of low risk and the high risk type the low risk are basically transfusion dependent and of course they could have problems due to low platelet and infections due to low white cells while the high risk are the one who go on to develop leukemia today we talk of molecular tests and there are molecular tests in the field of mds which give you diagnosis which give you prognosis which give you treatment i'm going to discuss three cases with you in next 10 minutes the first case is a 70 year old lady from bhopal she has a refractory macrocytic anemia she has high platelet count she is transfusion dependent she has a diagnostic megakaryocyte in the marrow and there are no blasts in the marrow i'm sure by now you have probably already made the diagnosis of the type of mds this is the characteristic megakaryocyte which has a nucleus which is hypolobated and eccentrically placed another picture showing you the megakaryocyte of this lady and that is the diagnosis karyotyping shows you that this is deletion of the long arm of fifth chromosome the phi q minus syndrome this is invariably obvious in the karyotyping itself very rarely you need fish to prove this point this disease is a low risk mds very rarely it goes on to develop leukemia traditionally the treatment of this has been blood transfusion periodic interval for the rest of your life however there is a breakthrough today we have a targeted therapy in the form of a drug called lenalidomide which can normalize the hemoglobin of two out of three patients of phi q minus syndrome in fact there are occasions where the hemoglobin goes above normal and the person has donated blood and that is the drug revlimid lenalidomide so success is galore two out of three for a mds is fantastic but there are failure as well one third of these patients who otherwise were given a good prognosis don't respond and the reason for that is these may have an additional mutation that is affecting 5 tp53 tp53 is the gene for cancer these are various kind of mutations in mds and the arrow points out at tp53 which is present in about 5 to 10% of patients and this gives one of the most unfavorable prognosis to mds what this cartoon shows you in the green area is the good prognosis in the red area is the bad prognosis at the left top you have deletion phi q minus which is a good prognosis then you see on the right side on the top deletion phi q minus associated with complex cytogenetics over here and that is poor prognosis at the left bottom it is associated with tp53 mutation and that is poor prognosis this gives you an explanation for why occasional patient or almost one third of the patient of phi q minus do not respond to the medical treatment and this shows you in the red curve the tp53 mutated patients have relatively poor prognosis what is this elephant doing here did you know that elephants don't get cancer and why do they not get cancer that is written at the bottom part of this slide human being have two genes for tp53 while the elephant has 
40 genes for TP53. Even if it, one or two of them are mutated, there are enough protection available, and therefore elephant does not get cancer. In human being, rarely we have this syndrome called Lee Frommany syndrome, after the name of two scientists, Frederick Lee and Joseph Frommany, who described germline mutation in T53, which increases the risk of cancer by 25-fold. Here is a family with multiple type of cancers in multiple generations of the family, the Lee Frommany syndrome. Changing gears, we go into the second case. And this case too is now Mr. Madhuka from Rajkot. He is 65 years old. He also has transfusion dependent anemia for last four months. There was nothing else in the history or physical examination. Hemoglobin is around six and the MCV is high. Looks quite similar to the first case. White cells are okay. Platelet count is a bit high. Blood chemistry is normal. He didn't respond to B12 and folic acid. His transferrin saturation was high, ferritin was high. Bone marrow showed dysplastic changes in a single lineage, that is erythroid lineage. In addition, there were 6% ring sideroblasts. Is this refractory anemia with ring sideroblasts? No, sir, because 6% ring sideroblasts are not adequate to make this diagnosis. To diagnose RARS, you require anemia, he has it. Dyserythropoiesis, he has it but you require 15% or more ring sideroblasts. And this could be a diagnostic slide of RARS, but our patient didn't have this. So you resort to some molecular studies. And the molecular study in this situation is mutation in SF3B1. These are various kind of molecular aberrations which occur in patients of MDS. And for this particular patient, we are talking about the splicing factor mutation, the SF3B1, which was mutated in this gentleman. And what you see in this particular slide is the median survival of patients who have SF3B1, it is seven to eight years. So this is relatively a very low risk MDS. Making this diagnosis is a good diagnosis. And as you again see in the red curve, patients with SF3B1 mutation have a long survival. So hematological parameters of SF3B1 mutation identify a subset of MDS patient who are invariably elderly, who have little high platelet count, who have picture like pure red cell aplasia with dysplastic changes and ring sideroblasts. No blast cells, low IPSS risk score, leukemia free survival, and there's less impact in the overall survival. What's the treatment? Once again, the treatment till yesterday was periodic blood transfusions. Now there is a breakthrough. Like lenalidomide for the 5Q minus, we have loose petal sept, which is an injection for patients of RARS. This injection is given subcutaneously every 21 days, and majority of the patients become transfusion free. This patient, after about two years of his follow-up, goes on to develop a platelet count of almost about eight and a half lakhs. We thought of an alternative diagnosis. JAK2 mutation was done and it was positive, and therefore a diagnosis of MDS MPN Overlap syndrome was made in the form of MDS, RARS with thrombocytosis. Does this make a difference to the clinician? Yes, it makes. We have a specific drug for this called ruxolitinib available at Jakavi. We move on to the last case of the day, and this case is relatively young. Mr. Raj Bahadur from Belgaon, aged 52. He's enjoyed his life with smoking and alcohol all through, but now has developed a significant anemia. He also gets frequent infections. He's thrombocytopenic, and marrow shows trilineage dysplasia. His marrow showed MDS RAEB1 because there were 7% blasts. His karyotyping was normal. He was offered two different types of treatment. One, what is called hypomethylating agents, HMA, the prototype example of which is azacitidine, which works to differentiate the blast to a mature cell and improves the marrow function, versus the classical chemotherapy of AML, what's called seven plus three, where we give cytorabine for seven days and duanorubicin for three days, this to be followed by bone marrow transplantation. Unfortunately, this gentleman had no donor. 
He had multiple consultations and different opinions. To come to a stereotype treatment for this gentleman, NGS panel was offered for MDS. And this is a comprehensive targeted myeloid disorder gene panel in which you see three colors. The pink color is the tire one, which should be your primary goal. Failing which you can go to the blue one, the tire two, and failing that you can go to the green one, the tire three. What you see in the pink color over here is one particular mutation, the TAT2 gene mutation. And this was positive in our patient. TAT2 stands for 1011 translocation 2 gene. Is this important to the management of this our patient from Belgao? Yes, it is important. TAT2, as you see in the left bottom, is a common mutation, and this is an epigenetic dysregulation abnormality. And this article tells you that when TAT2 is mutated, the response of the patient to hypomethylating agents is much better. The dilemma of giving him chemotherapy using 7 plus 3 versus hypomethylating agent was sorted out by doing this molecular testing. And as you see over here in the first column, TAT2 is a common mutation present in about 30 percent of patients with low risk MDS and 20 percent of patients of high risk MDS. To conclude my talk, myelodysplastic syndromes are common hematological myeloid malignancies. There are various types. They can be divided into low risk and the high risk. Till yesterday, a lot of patients of low risk just were survived on blood transfusions and finally they succumbed. And the high risk needed chemotherapies and bone marrow transplantation. As we saw today, using the molecular testing, starting from simple things like karyotyping or fish going up to NGS, you can pick up patients with 5Q minus syndrome. You can pick up patients of RARS with SF3B1 mutation. You can have poor or good prognosis in 5Q minus if you look at TP53. And lastly, you saw a gentleman who had a therapy chosen because TAT2 mutation was documented. Working together in the clinic as a clinician, pathologist, and the molecular biologist probably have helped in overcoming a lot of poor prognostic features in patients of MDS, and we have been able to virtually crush myelodysplastic syndrome. I dedicate my, this talk to my students who make me learn every day.